welcome to this edition of Student of the Game, Rewind Edition. I'm your boy, Ro, contributor for State of the U, SB Nation, and OG member of that number one football cast in the Dominican Republic, Ola, the Orange Bowl boys. So you know what? I got to go ahead and give credit where credit is due. I got recently privately messaged by at Rudy Jean Bart, and he said, you know what would be great, especially in times like this, could you do a student of the game, student of the game series on classic old school Miami Hurricane games? I thought about it. It didn't take long. I was like, you know what? That's a great, great idea, Rudy. And I gave you the opportunity to tell me what game you wanted, and this is it. It's 1992, Florida State versus Miami. We are in the midst of a 58-game home winning streak. This would be home winning streak number 48 to 49 for the Miami Hurricanes at this point. And going back, and as soon as I started to unlock the clip and I saw Tamaric Vanover take that opening kick for Florida State and take it to the house, I was like, ooh, I know what game this is. This is the game that arguably had the hardest hit ever, ever in the University of Miami Florida State series. It was when Tamaric Vanover took a simple screen and went right into the Bermuda Triangle and got erased by Michael Barrow. It was highlighted also as well with a Lamar Thomas touchdown late. And, you know, the lore says that Lamar Thomas wasn't supposed to be there, but Lamar being Lamar ended up being in prime position to go ahead and take a touchdown that put Miami ahead. And how would it end? Of course you know how it ends in a series like this with a Florida State miss kick. So without further ado, go ahead and enjoy this edition of Student of the Game, Rewind Edition. And welcome to this edition of Student of the Game, Rewind Edition. It's 1992, ladies and gentlemen. It's FSU versus Miami. And you can see the University of Miami Hurricanes rocking their traditional orange tops, white bottoms, so you know they're at home. Let's set up the cast of characters, shall we? It all starts right here, under center, this man. Future Heisman Award winner, Gino Toretta, number one three. And, you know, that was a big reason why I wore 13 in high school was this guy right here. Also, Dan Marino. So, you know, growing up an Italian kid in an Italian family, having 13. And he's, yeah, man, that was everything. Anyways, right here in the backfield, you have Stephen McGuire. You also have Kevin Williams. What a stud he was. In the slot, Lamar Thomas, Lamarticus, number 36. Come down here, we'll kick your butt. Right? And then high C right here, Horace Copeland. Down here at the bottom, he's playing the X receiver. So, University of Miami is coming out in a three-by-one set when you consider you have the tight end and the two receivers up here at the top, your Y and your Z. Uh, and then also you have your X receiver. So, here's going to be the first play of the game. And I think Gino coming out of the box knows that they're going to give a lot of respect to Horace Copeland, who possessed a lot of long speed. I mean, these receivers all did. They were fast. Uh, but in this case, you're going to see three-step drop and look at the rhythm. Here you go. One, two, three, balls out. If you don't think he knew where this ball was going, you're crazy. And what I like from Gino there as well, high into the outside. You know, that's going to get away from those FSU DBs. And first play of the game, we know the cast of characters ended up being a good play. Hey, let's keep it rolling. So Miami continues to run its ace back look, right, where they have a single back in the backfield. They have three wide receivers. Now, this was Pretty revolutionary at the time. Dennis Erickson brought this with him. Uh, teams were running the pro offense. They had a fullback, traditional halfback, or they were continuing to run the option. So uh, for Miami to do this, this was uh, this was quite a thing. You know, I always said, too, you know, Miami needs to keep pushing the envelope of, like, ingenuity and offense because when they were great in their heyday, like we're watching this, uh, they were pretty ingenuitive. And in this case, they're hitting everything underneath, right? All the wide receivers at this point, Horace Copeland, Kevin Williams, and Lamar Thomas, have all gotten stops underneath. So me watching this, I'm like, okay, when's the shot coming? And here was the shot. Gino Toretta, first drive, is going to come back. There's the pump fake. Pretty ball, by the way. Nice dime. Splits the safety and the cornerback. Now, I'm watching this continue. I'm like, what the heck just happened? <laughs> okay. And by the way, boom. Kevin Williams literally... Lays out Buddy under the ground. Uh, and if you didn't think that they needed replay sooner than they did, like plays like this will just go ahead and just make you scratch your head. Because as this play continues to unfold, and it's going to go ahead and change views very shortly, here it is. Here's the first thing you're going to notice. It's essentially illegal touching because, look, Horace is 
I mean, Horse is like five yards off the sideline. <laughs> so obviously he can't be the one that establishes the touch. So I don't even know if that's a rule in 1992, but if it was, Buddy missed it. And then you tell me if he's – he never has possession. Never. Of course, you know, if you're a referee back here in the early 90s, if there's a call to be made, have it go against Miami. And uh, FSU would get the ball. So Tameric Vanover took that opening uh, touch to the house. And then on the first drive, Gino Toretto throws a uh, pretty touch pass to Horace Copeland, who then fumbles it away. Doesn't look good early for the Miami Hurricanes. So this is leading into the second drive for the Miami Hurricanes. Ryan McNeil just picked off the Seminoles, and Miami's in business in, uh, you know, on their side of the field. So a little uh, trickeration right here. Um, okay, let's set this play up. They're going to go ahead and have McGuire just go ahead and get in here. So you have an empty set look, and uh, they're showing pass all day. Uh, you're going to see your right tackle. He's going to sell it too, and your right tackle is now currently your head coach for the Oregon Ducks. This is Mario Cristobal. Right here at right tackle. So, And uh, at the snap of the ball, hey, anytime you see empty, right, you're going to go ahead and think of a quarterback draw. I mean, that's got to be in the defense's mind, but the way they just go ahead and make it a quarterback. Look at this. <laughs> like nine yards for Gino Toretta. Who knew? He has so much wheels. But uh, obviously a good setup play in parts. You know, you go ahead and get the halfback to go ahead and flex out one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. You sell the right tackle on the pass, pass block, and Gino Toretta. Takes care of the rest. Nice play, Miami Hurricanes. So here's the continued concerted effort by the Miami Hurricanes to take what the defense has given them, especially with their wide receivers underneath. You're going to see Florida State right here. They're setting up. Uh, they look like they're going to come blitz, and this is just going to be an okie doke. You see that the University of Miami is fanning out to go ahead and potentially get their blitz protections to come this way. It doesn't. Hey, man, I've been seeing this since, uh, you know, some of the modern-day student of the games, but – Obviously, it's going to go ahead and redirect, and you're going to see the linebacker right here. Is that is that Derek Brooks? Man, what a missile. Yeah, that is Derek Brooks. Derek Bro Brooks has a beeline for Gino Toretta's back. And uh, still, it's going to be a good play. It's right here, a little quick out. And it doesn't matter what error you're in. If you could get Miami guys with enough cushion, and you can see the cushion between Lamar Thomas and his DB, you get enough guys in space for Miami, this is what they do. Nice little move. And it turns into like another 10 yards, a little uh, you know, horse collar. There was no such thing as a horse collar tackle back then. And uh, just just simple pitch and catch. And there you go, you know, Miami, let's get back to this. So early into the second quarter, Miami's still down 7-0. And they're facing a third and 10 here. And it just goes to show you this play, this clip. It doesn't matter what era you play quarterback in. A lot of times it's going to come down to that quarterback drop to wide receiver route relationship. What that means, when you hit your final drop step, is your wide receiver running the perfect route at the perfect depth so that his back is still facing the quarterback and he's still selling it on that DB and you have all the advantage because you know where you're going, the DB doesn't. Pre-snap, you're going to see right here at the top of the screen, you got like a press corner over here on high C. And down here, Lamar Thomas is just going to run a perfect route. Now pay attention because we're going to go back to that quarterback drop. Ready? It's going to be a five-step, one, two, three, four, five ball out. I mean, that is that is textbook. That ball's out. Lamar wasn't even looking when that ball was probably halfway to him. He turns around, DB doesn't know, and that's what's going to go ahead and extend the change and get you into the red zone. First down, great pitch and catch. No matter what era, stuff like this will always work. Of course I got to give some of the defenders some love here. And before there was Gregory Russo and – yeah, there was an All-American named Kevin Patrick. So here you see Charlie Ward. Look at the rip at the bottom of the screen. There he comes, that future All-American. Got him. Look at the swag. So with about seven minutes left in the second quarter, Miami's been down the whole game. Uh, it's 7-3 at this juncture, but that's about to change. Because Miami's going to dial in a pretty good play. They're going to go ahead and fake a reverse. And the recipient is going to be right here. Coleman Bell, number 17. You're tight end. We've been tight end you for a while. And it's plays like this throughout our history. The big reason why. So here you go. Gino Toretta's going to go ahead and fake that end around. There it is. Roll out. Look back across the formation. And you couldn't part the Red Sea any better. Pay attention right here real quick because I caught this on film. Yeah, why not? Boom. <laughs> Bang. Touchdown, 
Man, and this, for people who didn't experience this era, they're going to go ahead and do a crowd shot coming up here in a little little while. FSU played Miami. This was this was the national championship. This, this was the game that led to who was going to play for the national championship pretty much yearly. And just, just look at the pandemonium. This place would get so loud. And they're going to set up the play <laughs> using some modern technology. Uh, actually, on this telecast was Keith Jackson, legendary announcer. And there you go. You're going to see the flanker on the on the reverse. And, and, and yeah, this is something that they make. There's your free safety, too. And I don't know what he saw on film to go ahead and do right here on the end. Of, uh, actually, he just took the run fake. <laughs> Oh, my goodness, dummy. Oh, there it was. He left the middle of the field wide open on that single high set. You had nobody within a mile of Coleman Bell, and that would be Miami's first lead of the game. So last time we saw this formation, this look where they basically took the uh, flanker and did an end around, um, Miami scored a touchdown with Coleman Bell. And I think they got back to that formation and they saw something because this was definitely a post-halftime adjustment. And here you go. This is Larry Jones now in at halfback. Gino Toretta is going to sell the same fake. There it is. But this time, right here. Boom. Wide open. Good play. Way to build off of a series. Now, I think Miami's going to go ahead and get penalized here on the block of the back. But didn't stop the fact from Miami learning what they did the previous half and going ahead and making the adjustment. You know, this is about 30 years ago. Um, close, right? You know, in two more years. This is 30 years old. Wow, that's crazy. And this tomahawk chop is just as annoying as it was back then as it is now. I mean, this is the stupidest hillbilly sniff glue just act like a bunch of sheep thing, I think, in the history of mankind and definitely college football. Like, look at this. Like, look. You think this is cool. Like, legitimately, like, Florida State fans, do you really honestly think taking your arm and going like this back and forth while singing, like, non-intelligible words and just doing this, you honestly think that this is cool? <laughs> this is the stupidest thing, no matter what era I've ever seen. So you're going to note the time at the bottom of the screen. It's 6.57 in the fourth quarter. Florida State's up 16-10, to 10, right? And, and Miami's not really having its way today offensively. 13 out of 16 drives at one point ended in three and outs. So Miami's driving. Uh, they're running out of chances here, to be honest. And Gino just astutely picks up that Donnell Bennett. He's They basically broke the huddle, let's be honest, with 12 men in the huddle. Uh, they send them to the sideline, and now here you go. You got 11. You got empty. Now, at any point when you're in empty – Quarterback's got to know you don't really have all the protection, especially if Florida State's going to go ahead and bring the house. They're going to bring this linebacker up here, this rush linebacker off the edge, and Florida State's going to have a meet at the quarterback moment, right? They're gonna, they're basically going to go ahead and bring him off the edges, and look at this. I mean, Gino, he knows he's going to take a shot. He knows he's going to get hit, and this is why he's a Heisman. Off your back foot, Lamar Thomas, bang. The place erupts. There's Sebastian the Ibis. Of course, it's Sebastian the Ibis. You see his name on the back of his jersey, and Toretta's down. But you know what? As a quarterback, you got to tip your cap. I mean, he took a massive shot on that play. But sometimes you have to in order for the greater good. Good guys go on top. If there is one play from this game that I vividly remember watching live and as a kid, it's this play right here. And arguably in the series and potentially all of college football, this is the biggest and hardest hit that I've ever seen in a Miami versus Florida State game. And you got to remember as a backdrop how this game started, right? In 1992, Tamaric Vanover took the opening kickoff to the house, quieted the Miami fans. It was 7 nothing in a blink of an eye. But guess what? Retribution, it's a dish served cold. Boom. <laughs> wow. They didn't call it the Bermuda Triangle for nothing. Because when your body went in there, it had a propensity to be erased. And Michael Barrow just provided the fireworks. Absolute pandemonium ensued. Tamaric Vanover stole on the ground, and there you go. Watch this hit again from a different angle. They're trying to get a quick screen. No thanks. 
No thanks. Florida State's driving. Miami is now up 19 to 16. Charlie Ward did a really good job getting them and driving the length of the field to put him in a position. There was even a critical fourth down conversion earlier in this drive. But you know what this series is all about, especially in this time period. And Maury's three of five for field goals on the day. He had one blocked and he missed one from about 30 yards. But you know what's about to happen, right? If you've been a Miami fan long as I have, you know. Wide right. Suck it. <laughs> 